Welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to write tests for database repositories using test containers. In the previous video, we have seen how we can write integration test where we have learned how to use rest assured and test containers and make a uh, API call and which talks to all the way up to the repository and database as well. In this video, we are going to learn how to write test only for repository. Spring Boot provides this uh, test slice annotation where you can load only a slice of your application context and test the behavior. For example, if I want to test only customer repository here, I, all I need is to load this repository and all the necessary infrastructure for Spring Data JPA repositories to work. And I can use test containers to spin up a uh, whatever the production database that I am using. I can spin up that uh, same type of database using test containers and I can uh, write tests that talks to that database. Similarly, we can use a slice test web MVC test annotation to test only customer controller over here so that you don't load any of the other components, not any services or repositories, nothing. You can load only the controller that you are uh, interested in testing. So because of the slice test annotation, it will become much faster to run this test because it doesn't load all the uh, components of your application. So in this video, we are going to learn how to write tests for repositories. And the pattern will be similar whether you are using any uh, SQL databases like Postgres or MySQL, etc. And if you are using MongoDB or uh, Elasticsearch, any other NoSQL type databases, the process will be similar. You will use uh, test containers and you can spin up whatever the database you are trying to use. And then you can write test for a repository layer only. In the previous video, we have created a Spring Boot application and we have included uh, Spring Boot Starter Data JPA and we have included web and we are using PostgreSQL and notice that here we don't have any in-memory database drivers in our class path and we have included a test containers Postgres module and in the previous video we have seen how we have uh, written a integration test using at Spring Boot test. This annotation will load all the application components in your application. But now we are about to write a test for custom customer repository and we don't want to load all other components. We just want to load uh, customer repository and whatever the other infrastructure like database, uh, data source, uh, bin and few other things. So what we can do, we can leverage this Spring Boot's at data JPA test annotation. So these are called a uh, test slice annotation. Similar to data JPA test, if you are using plain JDBC template or anything like that, you can use JDBC uh, test annotation. And if you are using MongoDB, you can write data Mongo test, something like that. So you can write this test uh, specifically targeting that particular repository only. <coughs> instead of loading all the other components in your application. So here we are following, uh, we are going to follow the similar pattern that we did in our controller, but later we'll see what are the other approaches are available and it even makes simpler for writing this repository test. So here we created a PostgreSQL container, which is of type static, so that we can use the same container for running all of, all of our tests. So there is a provision where you can use non-static um, field here and then you can start and stop for every single test, but it is not highly recommended. It's going to be resource intensive and it will slow up uh, test execution. So we are using this static uh, Postgres container and we are using a Postgres 15 Alpine image and we are starting the container before executing any of our tests and we are using this Spring Boots dynamic property source registration mechanism and then configure spring database properties like what is the data source URL database uh, username and password using this uh, mechanism. And finally, we have injected our customer repository and just to have a clean database before uh, running any of our tests, we are simply deleting all the entries in our customer's table. And in this test, 
we are simply creating a couple of uh, customer record uh, objects and then saving to the database finally we are fetching all the database and asserting there should be two records so here as i mentioned uh, in one of the previous video we don't need to test the built-in methods built-in in the sense which we are inheriting from um, spring data jpa repository interface like in our case here all these find all save all all those methods are coming from this jpa repository ideally we no need to test those uh, methods they are well tested already uh, working fine we are using those library functions but just to get the feel of how we can write data jpa tests okay and using a real database we are starting with here <coughs> now when you are using data jpa test and right now if i run this one it is going to fail and the reason for it to fail is by default when we are using data jpa test it is going to auto configure a test database by using an in memory database uh, driver but right now we don't have any in memory database driver like hsql or h2 in our application class path so it will fail saying that it cannot register data source we can see so fail to replace data source with an embedded database for test if you want uh, an embedded database support uh, please put a supported one on the class path but we don't want to test with in memory databases we want to test with the same database that we are going to use in our uh, production okay so that is the whole reason we are using test containers okay so what we can do to turn off that behavior we can use that auto configure test database and specify replace equals to none so what this do it will turn off that behavior of uh, registering using in memory databases and here we took care of uh, spinning up the postgres database and registering those properties now it should work as we expected so i am running this test and here we can see a postgres container is spinning up and we can see the test is passing and if you notice we are using postgres database in our test here you can see we are using postgresql dialect here okay so you may wonder why should we use test containers or uh, why we can't simply use in memory database okay so i would uh, strongly recommend you to go to uh, testcontainers.com/guides and there is a guide the simplest way to replace h2 with a real database for testing so in this guide we have a um, few reasons why testing with h2 in memory database while using a different database in production is not really a, a good idea there are some reasons for it for example suppose you are using some postgresql specific uh, features like here um, we can insert into some table and then on conflict to nothing suppose there is a code unique identifier and if you are trying to insert uh, same record with an existing code it's going to fail but on this case you can simply uh, write this on conflict do nothing just to ignore that it won't throw any error it won't insert any duplicate record but this works fine with postgresql database but this syntax doesn't uh, work fine with h2 in memory database but there are some workarounds where you can run your uh, h2 database with um, postgres compatibility layer but you will end up doing all this uh, check okay i am writing this query and it is going to work fine with h2 but let me check with postgres also once because you are not 100% sure that whatever the query you are writing is going to work fine because you are using a different database and you are going to run your application with a completely different database so the highly recommended approach is to test with the same type of database that you are going to use in your production database okay also there is a other scenario where you might write a query and you are using some feature that is supported by your h2 database but not by your production database in our case uh, postgres database so here uh, there is a function called ronum which is supported by h2 but it is not supported by postgresql so in this case what happens you are going to write this query and you are going to run this test 
which is going to pass and you feel like okay my code is working fine and then you are going to build this and then you are going to deploy into some environment and then you are going to use or run some other kind of test then you will get to know okay it is not going to work with postgresql database but that is the whole point of writing automated test right you should catch these issues as soon as possible but in this case you are going to assume that whatever the code you have written is working fine and then at very later cycles you are realizing that it is not working fine with the actual database that we are using so to to remove all this uh, friction and pain it is best to test with the same type of database that you are going to use in production so that is what we are going to do here so as we see it is working fine with our uh, postgres database which is being spin up by post uh, test containers but we can simplify it a little bit okay so instead of um, using this life cycle callbacks to start and stop the container test containers provides JUnit Jupyter integration and we can leverage this at test containers annotation and you can remove these lifecycle callbacks and put at container annotation on this postgresql container uh, field so now this test containers JUnit uh, Jupyter extension is going to take care of automatically starting this container before executing any of our test and it will automatically stop once the all the tests are uh, executed in this uh, class so it is kind of a simplified approach okay it will run exactly in the same fashion like earlier okay and there is even much simpler option than this also okay so let us uh, take a look at the guide again once so there is another feature where test containers provides a special jdbc url where it is going to take care of automatically spinning up um, the desired container and then hook up your database url with the spring boot application context so what is that special jdbc url usually when we configure jdbc url it will it is in the format of okay let us see here this is the usual um, jdbc url that looks like right jdbc colon postgresql colon host port and what are the database url this is how usual uh, postgresql jdbc url looks like but here we can simply prefix uh, tc colon after jdbc and then you can specify what is the database you want to use and you can optionally specify what is the uh, docker image that you want to use for spinning up this postgres container and it is going to ignore what are the username and password for test so if you configure the properties like this test containers um, jdbc url is jdbc colon tc colon tc stands for test containers and specify what is the type of database that you want to use and specify docker image tag and you can ignore username and password and specify a database even this doesn't really matter so with this spring boot and test containers work together and then uh, it is going to automatically spin up a postgres database and point um, spring boot data source properties to that newly spinned up container okay so this is even going to be simplified and one more thing is earlier we have used this auto configure test database and replace none we can also do the same thing using property as well we can specify spring test database replacement none so let us take this and now you don't even need to use that at test containers and then define this container and you don't need to even hook up this dynamic property source so with just these two properties it is going to take care of using this postgresql container using test containers let us run this test see it is working fine with postgresql container so imagine the benefits are clear right you should be testing with actual database 
that you are going to use in production i mean same type of database not with uh, other types of database because even if you write tests they are kind of are not very useful because you are not sure whether they are going to work exactly the way uh, you are uh, using during testing it is going to talk to a completely different database and maybe syntax wise it is not compatible or some features are not available so best to use the same type of database for testing which uh, you are going to use in production as well as i mentioned it is not really necessary to test methods that are coming from jpa repository they are well tested by the framework authors itself so most of the times we should be writing tests for our own custom methods so in our customer repository in customer jpa entity we have email and password and we are creating a custom kind of our login functionality we are creating a method called find by email and password by passing this email and password so basically spring data jpa is going to dynamically generate a query that checks with where email equal to this value and password equals to this value it's going to automatically generate that query by using this method name okay and sometimes the the customer with given email and password exist or not so that is the reason we are going to return optional of customer okay so this is a custom method that we have written and we should be testing this custom method so if you go to this customer repository here that is what we are doing we are creating a new customer object and then we are storing into the database and here i am calling this find by email and password with these values and here I am asserting this optional customer should present. Okay, so if I run this test now, it should pass. Okay, so this is how we can write uh, tests for custom methods in our repositories, and we should be testing these custom written methods instead of uh, methods coming from a framework. Couple of days ago, Spring Boot 3.1.0 Milestone 2 is released and there is a newer feature that has uh, integration with test containers simplified. So usually this is how we were using test containers for testing, right? Uh, we annotated with add test containers at the class level and then we uh, created the container and annotate with add container. And then we were using this dynamic property source to hook up the properties like this. So it is kind of a very common and repetitive boilerplate. So uh, Spring Boot team came up with this um, simplified approach where in addition to adding this add container, like here we are using Redis, right? So we can annotate it with at Redis service connection. And Spring Boot test infrastructure is going to take care of hooking up all these uh, required properties. And then we can continue using that uh, Redis in our test. So kind of a simplify this approach and i have created a sample application so here i have simple uh, spring boot application and i am using 310 milestone 2 okay here i have the same similar type of uh, application i have one entity and i have a simple repository over here and i have created a product repository test and this is you know uh, we are going to use data jpa test and we are turning off auto registration of in memory database and we are going to use test containers uh, annotation to spin up this postgresql container automatically the different part is right now here we are not using this dynamic property source and then create a spring data source.url username and things like that instead we simply annotate with at jdbc service connection and then we have uh, just querying the database and there are no products so we are asserting product size is zero now if we run this test it's going to work fine so it's kind of a simplified and eliminated this boilerplate that you keep writing like this uh, configuring dynamic property source and all and at the moment as as of milestone 2 there are support for all these types of uh, databases like um, cassandra couchbase elastic set jdbc which works with any relational database kafka mongo so kind of a most widely used commonly used services are already uh, supported in uh, milestone 2 i hope you understand how to write tests for database repositories using test containers. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.